chapter 24 of the book, God titled Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Dictated to me. And his command and direction I typed every word, every sentence, every paragraph, every chapter, and the title. Just as he commanded and directed Moses uh, to write the Torah, first five books of the Hebrew Bible, which is the belief of at least the Orthodox Jews of Judaism, and uh, I should think primarily, I don't know exactly, but I would think it's because he couldn't have that knowledge. The Jewish people derived 613 laws from God for the Jewish people from those five books. Uh, you know, how could Moses, well, you know, he's raised in the house of Pharaoh in Egypt. And uh, anyway, how could he have that kind of knowledge to write Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers? I guess he could have written Exodus, but you know God had him right there. Nobody was literate back then. Even a son of Pharaoh wouldn't go. He might have known. <laughs> he might have known Egyptian signs that were used as writings. But uh, yeah, God had to teach him Hebrew, just like He had to teach me the Bible. I had never read, it, not completely, parts of it. I kind of knew about it. But uh, no, atheist for 50 years. But he was with me at birth, orchestrating my life to make sure I had a life of suffering, familiar with disease, suffering numerous grievous wounds. Um, and he had the entirety of the Hebrew Bible written in just that same manner. All the prophets wrote their own book at his command and direction. And that's all been explained. And this is a long chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on 24. The leper scholar, no, the righteous servant, Moshiach, versus Israel in Isaiah 53. In parentheses, Jews for Judaism, exaltation. The belief that Isaiah 53 describes the Jewish people as the man, Israel, that is often attributed to Rashi, is now the prevalent teaching on the subject. Jews for Judaism is one of the most followed on the internet in its analysis of Isaiah 53 being the, all the Jewish people gathered as one man, Israel. The following is from Jews for Judaism, Isaiah 53, verse by verse, as you can find on their website. The following, okay, this begins with a quote, didn't change anything. And they and I'm beginning with I didn't do all of fifty two and all of fifty three. I may have done that, fifty two. But just uh I think five five different verses. You know, with Toby I just did fifty three ten. This is chapter 52, verse 13 of Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall succeed. He will be exalted and become high and exceedingly lofty. The success, oh, this is their commentary. The success and exaltation of God's Servant is an event that the prophet sees as futuristic. The immediate context, 52, 7 through 12, I don't know why it's 7, tells us that this is part of the blessing that Israel will experience at the time of the rest of her restoration. No, it's not. It's not what it means at all. It's not even close. My response to the commentary on 52.13. In Isaiah 52, verses 13 through 15, 
a multiple verse quotation. The Lord begins to describe the righteous servant. Moshe, a Gentile, not a Jew, and certainly not all the Jewish people gathered as one man Israel. That's based on the scripture. To describe the righteous servant, Moshe Echo chapter 53. Isaiah 52, 13 through 15, should have been verses 1 through 3 of chapter 53. In quotes, my servant, to be exalted and become high and exceedingly lawfully, is now the Gentile man God comes with from Adam and of the Jewish people and that are with him. A Christian country is not the exiles. It is the Gentile that becomes my righteous servant. And, and he's Moshe in Isaiah 53, verse 11. After passing the test of devotion in Isaiah 53, 10, when he makes himself an offering for guilt in the covenant with God, which I've described in prior uh, chapters. You really need, if you really want to find out about 53, you need to look at uh, chapters 21, 22, 23, 24, and the introduction. Um, and there's videos. I'm, I'm, I'm completing them as quickly as I can. You know, new, fresh videos. The ones I did just a few weeks ago already have been reposted by me at the command and direction of God so many times that they're starting to wear out. So... Trying to stay on top of it. Keep fresh ones out there. The test of devotion in Isaiah 53.10 when he makes himself an offering for guilt in a covenant with God. Basically the covenant is I'm going to give you long life and you'll see your children. If you go through my fire refinement, become my righteous servant, a prophet, and uh, make many of the people, my people, the Jewish people, righteous. And I said, okay. Remember, 22 years ago, well, I don't know if it's on this particular section. Uh, I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer that God takes credit for. He says, I did that. Untreatable. And it gave me a month to live. Crushed with the disease. It certainly crushed my life. But month by month, I wasn't dying. I wasn't even exhibiting signs of lung cancer. And that's because God took it away after the x-rays. <laughs> now, I suffered the colon cancer greatly. It was brutal. But really, lung cancer, it's like I never really had it. And yet, I had doctors. I mean, we, you know, this can be proved. You can get medical records from 22 years ago. And that's how long ago it was. And give him a long life. And become his righteous servant, Moshe. And I'm working on making them any righteous by putting this new knowledge into circulation. The immediate context of Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 12, is poetry. And an announcement of prophecy fulfilled in the return to Judah of all 13 tribes who had been deported in exiles to Assyria and to Babylon at one time or another. All 13 tribes. That's what 52 is about. That's not what he said. <clears throat> The return included God's forgiveness of all the sins and inequities of the Assyrian Babylon exiles. Jeremiah's time to come of the new covenant with sin forgiveness is in the day of the Lord by the Roman dispersal. One forgiveness of sins was for the exiles, the 13 tribes. And the forgiveness of sins in Jeremiah 31:31 31, 31 is for the Roman dispersal. And the time to come is when the, uh, Israel returns, the Jewish people. That was in 1948 when they created Israel. Basically the start of the day of the Lord. 
which will continue by all accounts I've been given for all of my life. And I have a long life. There's no telling how old I'm going to be. No telling how old I'm going to be when I finally get there. It's just like everybody's in disbelief. Or they don't want to, the rabbis don't want to read it. It's like, well, how can he know things we don't know? That's the point. That's the proof. I have knowledge they don't have. <laughs> I, I think they were expecting a guy like Jesus, a deeply religious man. Well, that's not me. I'm just the servant. <laughs> no, I can't worship or pray to God. He's right here. I don't, I don't even have to pray to talk to him like uh, Elijah did. Yeah. I have no self will. I don't even have my own self thought. He's not going to think, hey, Keith, ask me <laughs> or have me say something. That I wouldn't normally say. Some, a little bit. And it's futuristic. Did I finish reading that? Oh, yeah, Roman dispersal, the diaspora, which means away from the promised land. And is futuristic. The translation of Art Scroll and Shabbat of Isaiah 52 that Rashi comments on does not include the quotations that combine verses 13 through 15 for chapter 53. Which again, it is not Israel. It's not the Jewish people. It's not Jesus. All Jewish. No, it's a Gentile. God comes from a dominant of the which is Gentile land and uh, of the peoples, the Jewish people, none are with him. Well, you don't know he's coming if he doesn't have a man of representation with him. He covers the earth in the beginning. The Spirit of God covered the earth, and God is in his spirit. Okay, his presence is his mind. That's what will enter the temple. But he's still covering all the earth. It's just like right now. He completely inside of me, fills me, and yet he, he, he's outside too. You know who else said that? Jesus in the New Testament. I don't know where the Gentiles picked up on that. They couldn't possibly know what I know of it. Because Jesus is just a myth. It, it never happened. Um, no, it's just a story. I got plenty on it. Go look at the, the scenes of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Personified Jesus Christ, but never worked wrote a single word of him. Find that one. It's a good one. He says he's a myth. It's God's words. It's from his book. That's in his book. I guess it won't be a bestseller for Christians, but there's going to be a lot of Christians who buy it if I ever get it published. Um, God says we need some help. We need some endorsements. Uh, because the publishing companies are, do the same thing it seems like everybody else is doing. What is all this? We've never heard these things. We shall see what we had never had heard. That's part of 52. What? Me and God are both tired of Texas. We're ready to go to Israel. The translation used by Jews for Judaism for its commentary also does not have the quotations. They are the only verse quotations of Isaiah 52 and a demarcation of the verses of the fulfillment of prophecy by the return of the 13 tribes from exile, 7 through 12. They are the beginning of the description of God's righteous servant Moshiach of Isaiah 53 and have nothing to do with the exiles. God's servant, the Jewish people. God's righteous servant is a Gentile in the beginning. He's probably going to have me convert in Jerusalem. And, and that's, okay, we've covered that. The translation of the Jewish Publication Society has the quotations. Didn't I just read that? Bear with me one moment. Oh, 
I just read this. What do you want me to do? Show me. He's showing me what the, he's not talking. Get it? Okay. 52 verse 13 again. Uh, this is 13 through 15. No quotations. No, no combining them. Uh, used by our scroll and Shabbat. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted. Lifted up. And he shall be very high. Verse 14. As many wondered about you, how marred his appearance is from that of a man, and his features from that of people. Verse 15, just so, more than appalled as everybody is, shall he cast down many nations? Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For what had not been told them, they saw. And at what they had not heard, they gazed. Okay, here's verse 13, 52, 13 through 15, by the Jewish Publication Society, 1985 version. Indeed, my servant shall prosper, be exalted and raised to great heights. 14. That, as the many were appalled at him, so marred was his appearance, unlike that of man, his form beyond human semblance. Verse 15, just so he shall startle many nations, kings shall be silenced because of him, for they shall see what has not been told them, shall behold what they never have heard. There will be me in this book. And the man described is, is four righteous servants in one. My servant is now the Gentile, not the exiles, who becomes my righteous servant, Moshe, in Isaiah 53, verse 11, after passing the test of devotion in Isaiah 53, 10, when he makes himself an offering for guilt and a covenant with God. Isaiah 53 then begins with a new multiple verse quotation that is missing the quotes from the translation of Marshall, Shabbat, basically everybody, as best I can tell. Nobody seems to have them. And also, Jews for Judaism in the translation used in its commentary. But, and that are included in the translation of Jewish Publication Society. God selected that book for me. He said, Keith, this is in the first or second week. Uh, we need to go to the bookstore. You need to purchase a Tanakh. And I said, what's a Tanakh? That's how much I know. That's the Hebrew Bible. What is that? Why? I didn't say why. I just said, okay. That's what I always say. Even when he's mad at me, Keith, I am God. Okay, I know you guys. Stop hurting me. He says, you're in the fire of fire. That's the way it is. I think he enjoys it too much. <laughs> that was him. That wasn't me. Okay, chapter 53, verse 1. Don't tell me i got to repeat there. But where's the quotes? Okay, in the book, you can find the one used by Art Scroll and Shabbat and see that there's no quotes. And the wording's a little bit different. I'm not going to reread. It's too long. Only covering one through seven, huh? 
Oh, getting through six. I see. They say seven, they meant six. Okay, this is combined in quotes. Quote begins, verse one, the beginning. The quote ends at the end of verse six. And this is the JPS. Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 2. For he has grown by God's favor like a tree crowned, like a tree trunk out of arid ground. He had no form or beauty that we should look at him, no charm that we should find him pleasing. He was despised, shunned by men. A man of suffering, familiar with disease. As one who hid his face from us, he was despised. Righteous servant, Moshiach. Despised. This is all covered in earlier videos. We held him of no account. Yet it was our sickness, verse 4, our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering that he endured. We accounted him plague, smitten, and afflicted by God. But he was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our iniquities. He bore the chastisement that made us whole. And by his bruises, or stripes sometimes as used, we were healed. Verse 6, we all went astray like sheep, each going his own way. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. Close quote. The speaker is no longer God from the Isaiah 52 multiple verse quote, but it is the witnesses of God's righteous servant of the Isaiah 53 multiple quote verse that follows. The witnesses who are Jews identify themselves as ones of the many made righteous by God's righteous servant Moshe, saying, it was our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering he endured. He was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our iniquities. He bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. Healed, And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. The quotes, and this has all been explained. I mean, it, it does. It, it's written basically to trick the Gentiles so that they learn some of God's law. He knew, he knew what they were going to do. He knows everything from beginning to end. Humanity for all time is basically his reality show that he created. There's a lot of discussion about that in other videos, other chapters. The quotes at verse 1 and ending before 7 identify the speaker verses 1 and 2 as also being the witnesses made righteous by the righteous servant from the suffering he endured. God's teaching is that no man bears the suffering of others. It is not even possible to bear the sins, wounds, chastisement, bruising, sickness, and suffering of other people. And those people, they, you know, there's the whole concept of vicarious suffering is it's not found in the Hebrew Bible. God says every man dies of their own sins. And that's actually in the Hebrew Bible. He says no longer will that saying that uh, the parents eat sour grapes and it's the children's teeth that are dented or something like that. He said no. I don't want that said in my land. Every man, he says, I hold the souls of all men in my hand. And all men die for their own sins. There's not one Gentile out there that's going to see heaven. Okay? Their sins are not forgiven. God doesn't make human sacrifice. He doesn't accept human sacrifice. Leviticus doesn't cover humans. Toby. No one or others can be 
heal, it, it's the fire of refinement. Those, he traced them. It looks like sacrifice. He knew what they were going to do. Unblemished Lamb of God. Sin forgiveness, like in Leviticus, for unintentional sin. And he, he drew them in. Drew Toby a singer in, too. It looks like that. But no, it's because he doesn't tell you it's for the fire refinement. You find it in Ezekiel, the book. He went through the fire refinement, and it's actually defined there to make his forehead like adamant harder than flint, to not be dismayed or fear his people. It's a boot camp. Just like a cadet wanted to go through a boot camp to become a Green Beret Marine or a Navy SEAL, which I understand is really tough. But it's got nothing, it holds nothing over God's fire of refinement. Look, you read my life. I went through many a thing, in, including gut shot, uh, almost lost my right leg, impaling my right knee on a broken glass bottle that was stuck in the ground, sticking up, jagged on the bottom. Born disfigured, I had no right breast, uh, breast and a short and shriveled right arm. That's afflicted by God at birth. That's in Isaiah 53. Also afflicted with disease. Crushed with disease. An affliction from God. None of that applies to all the Jewish people. God is one man, Israel, which we know was only at Oreb and in Jerusalem at the building of the second temple. At Oreb, with the acceptance of of God's new covenant, agreeing to be his people and follow his laws and commandments and God would be their, their God. And he is. That doesn't mean Judaism doesn't need to be straightened out. I'm not attacking the fact that God is the God of Israel. That's a given. He's not the God of the Gentiles, except me. Just like Elijah. Elijah the Gentile, certainly. He's even called... <laughs> Elisha says, where is the God of Elijah? One man, one Gentile at a time. That's, that's all God can take. And uh, uh, he's not Allah. No, there's no Allah. No, Muslims aren't getting 70 virgins. This is just not going to happen. They're not going to heaven either. The only way you can get to heaven, it's a Jewish heaven, is to convert to Judaism. Good luck, Mr. Believing in world exaltation, having two billion Christians disavow Jesus, two billion Muslims disavowing Allah, and coming in and exalting the Jewish people, and one, and telling them basically, you've been right about God all along. We've been wrong. You believe that? You've never talked to a Christian or a Muslim. Uh, but his entire commentary of Jews for Judaism is based on world exaltation. We're getting to it. No one or others can be healed or atoned for because another man or men suffer or are beaten, murdered, or sacrificed. So what are these verses by the witnesses about? <laughs> That was me talking about all that. Now, I think God's going to clean it up for me. The sickness of the witnesses is not being righteous. God's righteous servant suffers by the chastisement, punishment, bruising, crushing, and maltreatment laid on him by the words and power of God to make him suitable for his purpose that might prosper. A purpose that includes his righteous servant making a many righteous by his knowledge with long life, and the building of the third temple. The righteous servant bearing up to this fire of refinement is bearing the illness and pain of unrighteousness of the Jewish people to be recognized as a prophet of God that is that in and of itself will draw the Jewish people back to Judaism. Rek 